someone or are you personally battling a drug and alcohol addiction? Why are so many people addicted today? And why have so many people died as a direct result of this disease? If you've been affected by this problem and want answers like we do, then join us in our efforts to face this disease. Our purpose is to examine the truths, expose the lies, and uncover and provide resources to this affliction. Come, Join us in this journey. I was 26 years old. I was sitting in my truck in the parking lot of a movie theater getting high. I was an outcast my whole life, you know, like I, I didn't know where I belonged. Knocking my head against the wall over and over and over again. Until I came to Narcotics Anonymous. I heard a message that made my ears pop. People who I can relate to and, and identify with. Manage to uh, heal relationships, start family, and be happy with life. Drug problem? We can help. We've been there. Narcotics Anonymous. Have you ever felt like you're unsure of the future or think that your past is going to stick with you? Uh, do you have feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, and maybe no one believes in you or you don't believe in yourself? Well, my name is Joe and I'm here to tell you that if you watch and check in with Addiction Recovery TV, we have plenty of stories of people like that, including myself. Uh, we ask that you tune in, contact us, and get to know stories of other people like yourself to give you some hope and some feedback and a new outlook on life and how to move forward because it's possible. At Addiction and Recovery TV, we talk about raising awareness and we also talk about the problems and situations revolving around addiction and recovery. And it's always important to remember that if you struggle in an area and you're looking for help or resources, there are plenty available. And sometimes it just takes a picking up the phone and making one simple phone call that can make all the difference. So remember, we're always available and we're ready to help you in any way that we know possible and definitely lead you in the right direction because along the pathway of darkness there is a light of hope along those roads so hopefully you will be open to see the light and walk in that direction so if it's mental health if it's addiction even suicide the help is always readily available just take that initiative to reach out and receive it people have been touched by addiction, either directly or indirectly. Join us as we educate and break the stigma associated with addiction. Together, we can start a revolution and bring the disease out of the darkness and into the light. Great. Welcome to Addiction and Recovery TV. I'm your host, Charlene DeChico, and I'm in the studio today with my guest. Her name is Hillary. Welcome, Hillary. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you, so Thank you for joining us. So at Addiction and Recovery TV, we talk a lot about mental health and addiction. And so Hillary is our guest today who is going to talk to us about her service to a fellowship where she provides and volunteers her time to help members of this fellowship or program that may be in need of help and are looking for meetings. So Hillary, tell us a little bit about your position and, and what is the service position that you have? I'm actually the chair of the phone line committee, okay. which means that I've been in it for 10 years. I actually started uh, volunteering in this group when I had 90 days clean. Okay. And I was told that if I, if I took some service positions that it would help me stay in the group and stay clean. And I desperately wanted that. So I participated in this function and I saw the other people who were the chairs of this committee and what they did. And basically what we do is we um, have a 24-hour helpline 
that gets people to their next meeting. So these people call in the 1-800 number and they ask you for this area, which is San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, right? right? And they'll say, can you give me or tell me a time of a meeting in such and such place? And you kind of, that's what your role is. You tell them where it is, when it is. Exactly. Uh, many people think it's a chat line, but it's really not. However, we do have numbers we can refer people to, like the suicide prevention line, the emergency hospital, the police, wh whatever they need. Many times people call when they're in crisis. Sure. We're not really set up to go get people and take them to somewhere. Right. We're truly set up to get someone to their next meeting. But we are also people with a heart, and so we want to help people, so that's kind of what happens on this on this line. So from a service position and in the 12 step fellowships we've learned that members, people that are um, were maybe addicted to substances uh, or alcohol and they start going to these meetings, they are advised to get involved in what's called get involved in service and so they get these service positions where either they bring meetings into institutions or jails or maybe be on a phone line like Hillary. And so the question I want to ask Hillary is that, so now you're this person in this program, you are volunteering your time and you have, you're, you're getting in service, so they say, so do you find that there's a benefit to you from being involved? I mean, is this a true thing when they say getting in service helps you and in your recovery? How has that played its part in your recovery and in your life? Well, it absolutely plays a part because First of all, when we're in active addiction, alcoholism, whatever, um, we only think about ourselves. And it's truly a selfish disease, the disease of addiction. So when we come into the 12-step program and we're helped by others, we realize that by helping, by passing that along and helping someone sure. else, it actually helps us in, a, in the way that um, any uh, charitable act will help. Okay. It also helps us stay involved with our group of people so that if somehow we start isolating, we're staying at home, we're not going to meetings, we're not being involved like we were, people will call us. They'll right. say, what's up with you? What's going on with you? That's very helpful because the other side of the, uh, the disease of addiction, it's very isolative. People start feeling like nobody understands me, nobody feels the same things that I do. Uh, one of the great things about being on the phone line is that there's every once in a while someone will call right when I'm going to a meeting mm -hmm. and I can say to them, come to this meeting, here's the address. And I've met many people that way wow. and it's, it's, it's truly a miracle of the program because we are not all volunteers, nobody's being paid. Right. We all do this because we were freely helped, so we want to freely help another mm -hmm. person. So that spiritual principle of being in service and doing that for someone else actually then benefits you and your recovery and so you believe in that process and you say that it's real, it's true. Absolutely. That's great. You know. Interesting. So so we talked about the service, we've talked about what your role is. Now when they're calling they're looking to know about this place, right? These these meetings that people go to. So, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of what these programs have to offer and how, um, you know, what happens when they say these miracles happen at these meetings? Why does going to meetings and being involved in these fellowships benefit people's lives? Well, the first thing is that they stop using. <laughs> so okay. they stop using drugs or alcohol and that's the first miracle because without that they don't have the clarity of their mind to even understand what's happened to them, where they've been at. Um, they're encouraged to get a sponsor right. who's a person who's gone through the 12 steps and can help that person go through the 12 steps the way their sponsor helped them go through. It's, it's sort of a, a building on each other kind of, uh, kind of situation. Or unity, right? Everybody working together it's, for the common it's cause. It's unity, and, and people don't completely understand that, you know, we're all volunteers. We all, the secretaries of the meetings, they just open up the doors and make things happen. Mm -hmm. Nobody pays them to do it. They want to do it because we want to keep the spirit of, 
of our program alive. I mean, and then there's positions like treasurer, right, where people hold money, they're responsible, they mm -hmm. have the keys, they mm -hmm. have to open the doors. Right. I mean, this and it's these fellowships are pretty big. So, I mean, people are taking on these roles and positions, and this thing is happening. I mean, it's been since 1953 and even exactly. before then with some other fellowships that this thing has been going on. And here we are, 2019, and it's still happening. So, I mean, Hillary, is. this is evidence that this is um these programs are working they're working in the lives of other people and that not only by attending the meetings and staying clean like you said um but the service component and so you know if there's someone out there that's struggling or um, someone that maybe doesn't understand if they have a family member that's in this program because we hear a lot about that People that are in these fellowships or families get so tangled because it's like, look, you're you're going to these meetings all the time. You don't need to go to that place, and can't you just, you know, be with us? And so maybe you could talk a little bit um, to the public about how important it is to attend n these meetings, and then also the service position. Like if you're going to come and keep coming, you know, how the service piece really plays a big part in that. Often the families of addicts do not understand why they keep coming to meetings. They feel if they had willpower, if they were strong, they could just do it on their own. We go to meetings for various reasons. One of the things is that for people who are new that just walk in the doors, we want to share our stories with them as to what happened to, to us. It could resonate with them and their story. Um, that's, the, that's the second miracle that happens is first you lose you, you lose your addiction. The second is you open up to a new way of life. Mm -hmm. um, many times people who are heavily addicted to either drugs or alcohol are only using a tiny, tiny bit of their potential in life. And most of their energy is, is gone, going to the getting and using and finding ways and means to get more. Right. Now all of a sudden they're opened up to another, another type of life. And there's certainly um, there's certainly uh, people there that have gone before you that will help you, that will give you a helping hand and pull you up. So you ch you're changing your own life, but then you're also becoming an old timer at, at your 12-step mm -hmm. meeting. So now people are looking up to you and saying, how did you do it? Mm -hmm. And you, you resonate with that person and pull them up. Awesome. So that's, that, that's really the miracle of all of these 12-step programs, that they are going, they're going stronger. Yes, there's money involved that people donate, and it goes to not only our World Service office, but also to our area. And, you know, we are, we are very strong in many, many countries throughout the world, and we're very lucky here because we have meetings, so many meetings. There's countries where people have to drive 25 miles to get to a meeting, wow. and they still do it. See? So. Well, Hillary, we want to thank you for your service, and we know that, you know, you're putting forth your best effort, and we're seeing that you are passionate about what you do, so. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> So we see the evidence that you are passionate about what you do and we want to commend you for your service and, and just encourage you to keep going and let the um, anyone who's out there listening and watching to call the number and maybe you'll speak to Hillary and maybe you'll see her at a meeting and also knowing that if you're going to get involved in these fellowships that service is important as Hillary so described for us today. So Hillary, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your service. Thank you too. Here at Addiction and Recovery TV, we're here to tell you that there is hope and a, a new way of life from addiction. Uh, people like myself have struggled with this in the past, and we thought we were at the end of the road. There was no hope. There was no way out. Uh, you felt like no one else believed in us, and we didn't believe in ourselves. But the good news is that there is, in fact, a way out and a new future ahead for people like me and people like you if you or someone you know is affected by it. And the main thing is that you do not need to feel hopeless and you do not need to feel helpless because you're not alone. And if you tune in and watch our shows or contact us, you'll find out that you're no different and there is, in fact, a new way to live out there accessible to you and many others. Welcome to Addiction and Recovery TV. I'm your host, Charlene DiCicco, and I'm joined today with my guest, John. John is our guest today, and he's going to share with us how 
he's had some obstacles in his past and he was he would consider himself maybe lost on that journey and was able to find his way so john thank you for being here today with us yeah thank you for having me um yeah i mean uh you know uh after using for for years and years it uh you know it took me down a dark road and uh I was very lost in, in almost every area of my life. You know, I had uh, I was unemployable. I was homeless at one time, and um, you know, as a result of coming into recovery, um, I was able to turn some of those things around in my life and, and really create a life for myself that um, that was worth living. You know, I mean, I was out there on a mission to um, basically kill myself. You know, um, so you were in and out of jails or prisons and then at some point you were introduced to a program of recovery mandated or you just decided to attend meetings no i was never mandated um you know i'd been in and out of prison for uh, about 10 years and um you know really what happened was i just hit the end of my road okay. um you know there was no right moves left for me there was nothing that i was doing that was working for me anymore and uh, you know, I got into a 12-step fellowship. But as a result of coming there, yeah, like change started to happen. Things started to improve in my life. Um, you know, and it was a slow process. It wasn't immediate. Um, and I, I think that's like the hardest thing, you know, because I come from a certain lifestyle where I'm used to living a certain type of way. So what's the difference between how you used to live and then this program of recovery? Um, I, I mean, basically, uh, for me, when I was out there using, um, it was all about the drug okay. Why I was out there. Everything was about the drug. Um, and until coming into recovery, uh, I never realized that the drug was like the symptom of what was going on with me. So there you was know? a bigger problem. Right. There was something going on at my core. You know, it, at my core, um, I was damaged, uh, you know, as a result of childhood trauma, as a result of um, a whole slew of things. I mean, you can you can pick anything and say, you know, this is mm -hmm. the reason or, or the, the start, the guide, you know, that took me down that road. And uh, recovery really gave me an opportunity um, to take a look at myself. Um, so and, and building awareness, right? That same awareness to finding your life purpose, your destiny, and knowing right. what, well, why am I even here? Right, yeah, and, and coming to, you know, and not really even understanding how that process came about, you know, and uh, I mean, it was through the fellowship uh, and through doing some work in those fellowships, but as a result of doing that, um, I started to get in touch with, um, we talk about it's a spiritual program, you know, and uh, getting in touch with my own spirit, mm -hmm. um, that had been dead for so long, you know, and, and starting to make some decisions for myself, not based out of um, necessarily having to do it. Right. Doing it because it's uh, it's bettering my life. It's uh, it's lifting my spirit. I'm doing things that I enjoy today. Okay. Um, that that really that was so foreign. Uh, you know, I was always handcuffed to like a six block radius. You know, and I couldn't leave that area because that's. You know, uh, I was handcuffed to the drugs, you right. know what I mean? And, uh, like, my life has exploded open as a result of, like, coming and doing some work. When and you say work, yeah, what um, do you mean by work? Like, uh, you know, in the 12-step fellowship I'm in, we do, um, we do, we have a step process, and I do step work. And that's been the biggest thing, is taking the spiritual principles, like, that I've learned, um, and finding out how... I can apply them in my life on a daily basis. And I mean, that's the most important thing is practical application. Because right. I, you know, I had a lot of knowledge. Uh, e even years ago, prior to ever coming into recovery, I had a lot of knowledge, but I didn't know how to apply that knowledge into my life right. to improve any aspect of my life. Um, I like to relate it to like a pinball, you know, and I was just bouncing around. I, you know, my life was a result of circumstance, just whatever happened. I had no control over my life. Um, I had no control over my emotions. I had no control over anything I did. Uh, what recovery had given me was the ability to kind of take my life back, um, you know, and through that process of working on steps and, and being in service to other people and, you know, taking myself out of the equation, like me not being the most important thing. Okay. Um, you know, my life slowly started to change and uh, getting in touch with like that that higher power that spiritual print uh, you know the spiritual principle of faith 
right. you know um, that that was huge for me you know for me the biggest part was really just getting uh, first off getting involved in the process and allowing the process to work that was first right. and foremost um, and then finding out what it was that I actually desired out of life and for everybody that's always different you know everybody you talk to um, you know it's about money it's right. about a job it's about status um, for some people it's about family for some people it's about relationships um, you know and everybody has a different purpose or a different calling in their life you know and uh, really for me it was about the inner peace you know because I never had that my entire life you know and that's the thing that was always a struggle from a young age just having that inner peace being okay with myself right um, you know and like I created a life for myself where um, you know, I have a business, I'm employable, you know, I'm able to work, I'm able to make money, but that's not the things that define me. Right. Um, you know, the process has allowed me to really uh, open up some doors that I can really explore what it is um, that life's about for me. Right. You know, and for everybody that's different, um, you know, we have in this world, there's a daily grind, you know. Um, that's not what's important. I don't feel like that's my purpose here on this mm -hmm. planet, you know. Um, I, you know, I really believe that like we are spiritual beings, you know, and we're having this human experience. Um, so if I believe that, um, I have to feed that spirit, you know, and it's not about that I have a job or that I have the money or that I have that. Um, but at the same time, I'm not killing my spirit with drugs and alcohol and mm -hmm. all these different things. So really it comes down to finding like internally, like what is it? that like really brings my spirit to life mm -hmm. and following those things. And it's not a matter of money. You know, we live in a world where um, you need a job to pay your bills. There's mm -hmm. certain there's certain necessities that we all have, you know? Sure. And uh, those things do need to be fulfilled, but those aren't the things um, that really make my life worthwhile. That's not what's important to me anymore, you know, which is crazy to say, you know, because when I was out there, I thought, uh, you know all the if I had a bunch of money everything would be better You know if I had a better family upbringing things would be better if I had this things would be better um, These are all things that I thought were going to fix um, This spiritual issue that I was suffering with you know and really just coming to a point where what matters to me is growth personal mm -hmm. growth um, That doesn't come from my own thinking that doesn't come from my own um, judgment like I didn't come into recovery uh, wanting to have any spiritual principles I wanted to stop hurting you know I wanted to stop wanting to kill myself mm -hmm. you know and uh, you know through through just coming around and doing a little bit more and a little bit more and exploring the possibilities of what there is out there um, I've been able to get into this position uh, where my life has become very easy mm -hmm. um, you know, now that's not to say that there's not the daily grind of, of business and, and you know bills and and everything that goes on, um, but my spirit is alive. Uh, you know, I'm not handcuffed to an area. I'm free to do what it is that my calling really is, and, and really that's the essence for me of what recovery is. Um, it's being able to break free from this lifestyle. Um, that you know keeps you suppressed like in bondage basically right. right yeah keeping you in bondage and it allows you to just kind of open up into this new world where the possibilities are endless right um, the limitations are really set at the bar that you set them at you know and people had told me when I first came around into recovery um, that I could have anything that I wanted so long as I was willing to put in the work I didn't really understand what that meant or what that would look like um, but I have some experience that as a result of showing up and doing that work um, I've I've gotten freedom from self, you know right. that that self bondage, that self hatred, um, you know that guilt, the remorse, the fear, all these things that like really drove my addiction. Right. Um, you know, and it's it's opened up this world that's it's worth living. You know, and, sure. and that's an exciting thing. It's an exciting place to be in my life. Um, I, I really feel like, um, you know, I almost feel like that that childlike state in the way that. Um, I'm excited for what there is to come. I'm excited for like what doors will open, what opportunities mm -hmm. will come into my life. So, you know, that's great, John, because you're talking about like, you know, the struggle and then the awakening and then just that excitement of pushing through like the whole new world. And so what would you say to the viewers of someone maybe that's struggling or in that type of bondage and just can't see 
the way out or doesn't even have a clue on how to get out you know like what can you say to that person um you know really that's uh, you know that's the million dollar question right mm -hmm. there you know and um for everybody you know it's different um you know for me it took hitting a bottom mm -hmm. and uh and then another bottom and then another bottom um what i can say is there is help out there um there is an opportunity for you to get away from the life that you were living um, there, there's an opportunity to break free from that bondage that you keep yourself um, kept in that that prison uh, inside your own head. You know, because that's really where that's really where it was. You know, it was just the prison inside my own head. You know, and I was I was bound to within those limitations of what my head would tell me. And uh, there, is, you know, there is help out there. There's twelve step fellowships. Um, you know, there's mental health help. There, there's, you know, a lot of different avenues mm -hmm. that people can take. The biggest part of it um, was not a matter of just showing up. And, and that's uh, probably the hardest part in the beginning. Uh, I, you know, I don't grow as a result of just being there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't grow through just being around other people that are growing. I have to actually participate in that. And so there, you know, and, and that's part of like the work it, is, continuing to do work to get better not knowing when that's actually going to come um, but for me you know there was people around that had experience with what I went through and that was that's the hope mm -hmm. there's hope um, you know that an addict can put down drugs and um, you know and change their life you know um, and, and I didn't think it was possible and until I experienced that until I personally had some experience with that uh, you know, maybe I didn't even believe it myself, but it's out there and it happened for me, you know, and I know if it can happen for me, um, it can happen for anybody else. It takes time. It takes effort. Um, you know, it's hard work, but it's worth it, you know, and uh, it, it's created a lifestyle that I never thought would be possible. Um, you know, I have relationships with people that are amazing uh, that I never uh, even had the potential to have you know, an act of addiction. And, it, you know, addiction encompasses all areas of our life. Um, and it puts us in a corner that, like, that just doesn't seem possible to get out of. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like taking a beating in a corner and not being able to get out of that corner. If you don't know where you're going, you can find the roadmap, like John said, if it's through a 12-step fellowship or maybe it's through, through counseling, therapy, but spiritual awakening is what we're hearing today. And with the hashtag Destiny Series, coinciding with that it's really like that awareness you know John talked about having this self-acceptance and just you know awareness and then knowing that your life is on a new path and what are you going to do about it. through those spiritual principles and walking that spiritual journey you're then able to kind of get a grasp on what what is your truth right what is your life looking like in this new picture of drug free set free no more bondage and so right. it's it's really compelling because there's so many people that are in some form of bondage maybe it's not substance abuse for you maybe you don't even do drugs but maybe it's in your thinking maybe it's in your you know ideology of what you think your life is supposed to be or the wanting to you know live up to other people's expectations and you need freedom and so John is definitely a person today that we talked to that has a lot of freedom in his life. He seems like he's also worked out a lot of peace and that was really important to him of having that inner peace. And maybe that's important to you. Maybe you have no peace and, and no rest in your life and you're looking for that. So hopefully the story today like that John told is a story that you can relate to and it gives you some hope and some peace. And just remember to continue to reach out to us here at Addiction and Recovery TV. We'd like to hear from you if there's any way that we can help you. We have people like John who are readily available to lend a helping hand and also an ear if that's what you need. So thank you so much, John, for joining us. And thank you for tuning in with us.